Patch 11.6 is upon us, and as per usual, our team has been hard at work piecing together the tier list to give you the best read on the meta. With the help of our challenger players and using the most up-to-date stats, we strive to bring you guys the most accurate tier list possible. Finally, it looks as if the top lane meta may slowly be starting to shift, as Stridebreaker and Sterix have been hit again for 11.6. Jungle is receiving a little power back, as Smite and Gromp will benefit from buffs. Who do you guys think is the most balanced champion in the game right now? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. For all of your meta content needs, head on over to our new channel that focuses on keeping you guys up to date with the best trends for every single patch. Check it out with the link in the description below. And without any further ado, let's get right into it. As always, let's start off by running down the item and rune changes and discuss which champions will pan out as the biggest winners or losers. Shirelia's Battle Song is receiving a buff to the active cooldown as it will be decreased from 90 down to 75 seconds. Shirelia's is already highly undervalued on so many supports right now, so don't sleep on it for 11.6. We're looking at Bard, Thresh, Blitz, Rakan, and Galio as the biggest winners from this buff. So instead of nerfing Everfrost, it looks like Riot will be taking the alternative route and buffing the other two mage mythics. Luden's Tempest will have a new effect where dealing ability damage to champions reduces the Luden's proc by 0.5 seconds. All in all, a great change that will increase the damage and mobility for a large number of mage champions. We've got tank buffs as Sunfire Aegis will see its ability haste increase from 15 up to 20 along with the immolate damage per stack going from 10 up to 12%. With how broken Chemtank and Frostfire have been after their buffs, Sunfire has fallen to the wayside, and even with these changes, Sunfire will likely remain outclassed. Another AP item buff as Rabadon's cost will be cut down from 3800 to 3600 gold, a nice little late game buff to mages and AP assassins. An adjustment to Immortal Shield Bow is in store as the lifesteal is being reduced from 12 to 10%. The lifeline lifesteal increase has been completely removed. Instead, the new passive will give you 25 scaling to 50% attack speed on shield proc. The shield amount will also be increased from 250 scaling to 700 up to 300 scaling to 800. All in all, a power shift from sustain to bonus damage potential, which is great in our books. The change should end up pretty power neutral, but depending on the situation can end up positive or negative. Champs like Yasuo, Yone, and Samira shouldn't see a drastic shift in power level from these alterations. Leandri's Anguish will receive a power shift as the previous passive of gaining 5% magic pen per second against burning targets will be removed. Instead, you'll now deal up to 12% bonus magic damage based on the enemy's bonus health. This will make Leandri's tank shredding power more relevant and will even help against those HP stacking bruisers. Your burn damage champs like Mal's, Bran, Cassio, and Velkaz will be liking these the most. A shift in power to Iron Spike Whip will be issued as the cost is going down from 1200 to 1100, while the cooldown is increased from 15 to 20 seconds. Pretty neutral change in the grand scheme of things. Teleport Summoner Spell will receive a power shift as well. Home Guards will no longer be activated after using Teleport. The move speed from TP is being increased though from 30 scaling to 50% up to 50% at all levels. The cooldown will be buffed slightly later on going from 420 scaling to 240 down to 420 scaling to 210. These changes will hurt the cheese TP respawn plays where you zoom in with a million move speed but will make it more consistent for cross map TP plays. Smite will see its base healing increased from 70 to 90, which gives junglers a little more sustain for their early clears. The Gromp XP nerf from a few patches back will be reverted, going from 125 scaling to 168.75, back up to 135 scaling to 182.25. Since Krug's XP is still nerfed and Gromp is being reverted, the priority on fitting Gromp into your clear will rise a lot for 11.6. Moving on to the nerfs now, let's start by breaking down Stridebreaker. The health of the item is being reduced from 300 to 200. This is the first sizable nerf to the item. However, at the same time, it won't be enough to stop people from buying it. Overall, a very fair nerf that will drop champs like Darius, Garen, and many more down in power slightly. Now, on top of the Stridebreaker nerf, Sterix will also be hit. The healing from each stack of Bloodlust beyond the first is being reduced by 50%. For someone like Darius, who builds both Stride and Sterix as his first two items, he'll be the biggest loser here. A pick like Olaf, who has already been directly nerfed, will become even weaker now. Due to these two nerfs, non-Sterix and Stridebreaker users will see a nice rise for 11.6. A very small adjustment to a bruiser item that will hurt picks like Aurelia and Jax is to Blade of the Ruined King. Lifesteal will be reduced from 12 down to 10% and the siphon passive damage increased from 40 scaling to 120 to now 40 scaling to 150. 
2% less life steal for a small boost in damage later on is definitely more of a nerf, but you really shouldn't feel the effects much at all. A pretty sizable nerf to Seekers that will make it a much less enticing rush results in the armor per stack reduced from 1 down to 0 0.5. This means you're losing 15 armor at max stacks, which is actually really huge. You're losing 300 gold worth of value from this nerf. Overall, a nice buff to AD Assassins and a nerf to Squishy Mages. Verdant Barrier will see some very similar nerfs as the magic resist per stack is going down from 0.5 to 0.3. AP will also be reduced from 25 to 20. So many players have been rushing Verdant or just sitting on it and not completing into Banshees, so these nerfs will make that way less valuable to do. Your assassins will really be liking these two nerfs for 11.6. Void Staff is being hit with a small nerf as the cost will be increased from 2500 up to 2700, however the AP will be increased by 5. 5 AP is not worth 200 gold, so this is net negative change, but you'll still continue to purchase Void in the same spots you would before. Fleet Footwork is one of two runes being nerfed for 11.6. The heal AP ratio is being reduced from 30 down to 20%. Combined with the shield bow changes earlier, it looks like Riot is slowly starting to eliminate the amount of sustain that's present. It doesn't stop there either, as Ravenous Hunter will have its base Omnivamp completely removed, and the Omnivamp per stack is reduced from 1.7 down to 1.5%. Ultimate and Relentless Hunter will now become much more viable pickups and any champions who have been on the bubble between Ravenous or the other two will likely swap over now. The smite buff we saw earlier on was issued to help counteract how this Ravenous nerf would have affected the health of certain junglers early clears. Alright, let's move on to breaking down the direct changes to top lane and then the complete tier list. Urgot was just recently moved up to OP tier in our 11.5 mid patch update, so of course Riot is nerfing him right away. Urgot's W on hit modifier is being reduced from 75 down to 50%. The new Titanic Rush build has proved to be completely broken on Urgot, and this change will lessen the strength slightly. Considering many other top laners are being hit with that Stridebreaker nerf and Urgot doesn't need to build it, he'll be sitting just fine despite this nerf. Urgot will remain in our OP tier for 11.6. I guess Riot just hates Renekton mains or something because he's been nerfed yet again. Renekton's R bonus health is being reduced at the later ranks going from 250 scaling to 750 down to 250 scaling to 550. With Stridebreaker and Sterix being Renekton's two best core items from 11.5, he's getting the short end of the stick for this patch. Three different nerfs to Renek will see him drop from B tier down to C for solo queue. One of the best top laners in the game right now in Gnar is being hit with a base attack speed nerf. Base AS will be lowered from 0.625 down to 0.593. Base stat nerfs are always very overlooked and this will have a decent effect on Gnar, however our analysts believe he'll continue to cling onto S tier. For the first time in a few months, Darius will be dropping out of OP. With his two core items in Stridebreaker and Sterix nerfed, he's going to feel that to a certain extent and although Darius will remain a top carry pick in S, we gotta move him out of OP tier. To replace Darius will be Riven, as she's been the beneficiary of those direct buffs to E a few patches back, and with her core items buffed in the recent patches, and other top laners items being nerfed, it indirectly gives Riven another edge up. We won't be moving Garen down from OP just yet, although we will continue to monitor throughout the patch and make an adjustment in our mid-patch update if need be. Urgot, Malphite, and Cho'Gath will continue to dominate as they're consistent tank picks who aren't negatively affected by any of the Bruiser item nerfs. Our best low elo picks of the patch remain Malphite, Garen, and Urgot. Highest priority bans for top lane include Darius, Malphite, and Urgot. The nerf we've all been waiting for won't end up being the nerf we would have wanted as Hecarim Q damage is being hit on the lighter side. Q damage will be lowered from 60 scaling to 228 down to 60 scaling to 208. Don't get us wrong, 20 damage off at max rank is definitely something you'll feel, but considering Riot didn't touch the damage at rank 1 at all means Hecarim's early clear and gank power will remain intact. If you're able to stomp over the early game, which is Hecarim's specialty, that 20 damage off at max rank won't matter all that much. The new Korean build of Chemtank into Deadmans has also just put him on another level, so even with this nerf, our analysts believe Hecarim will remain an OP pick. The Shin Zhao mini rework is set to hit the rift for 11.6. There's a ton of different changes, so let's bring up to speed. Shin's passive heal will be nerfed, going from 10 scaling to 112, down to 7 scaling to 92. The AP ratio on the heal will be increased from 40 up to 55%. His Q bonus physical damage is reduced from 20 scaling to 52, down to 16 scaling to 52. 
W cooldown will be lowered from 12 scaling to 8 seconds down to 12 scaling to 6 seconds. W2 range is increased from 900 to 1000. Mana cost of W is going from 45 up to 60. There will now be an AP ratio on W2 at 50%. W cast time will now be a flat 0.5 seconds instead of 0.5 to 0.4 based on attack speed. W reduced minion damage will be buffed at the later levels going from 50% at all ranks to 50 scaling to 0%. W2 will now mark the opponent as challenged and provide vision of them for 3 seconds. W thrust damage is increased by 33% based on crit chance. Moving on to E, the cooldown will be lowered from 12 to 11 seconds. Dash speed is lowered from 3000 down to 2500. The cast range of E will be increased to 1100 on challenged targets. This means hitting the enemy with W will give you a super long range dash. Lastly, Shin's ultimate duration will be changed from 3 seconds extended by attacks and spells to a flat 5 seconds. A new AP ratio will be tacked onto Shin's ult at 110%. A TLDR is that Shin will be losing a bit of straight up dueling strength, but will now have easier ways to reach his targets. With those AP ratios thrown in there as well, we could see some hybrid builds emerge. Since Shin's been in such a terrible spot for a while now, it's hard for our analysts to predict exactly how these changes will affect the champion, so we'll be leaving him in B tier for now. Of course, as the patch progresses, we will be keeping a close eye on him and move him up or down as needed in our mid-patch update tier list. Next up, we have a much simpler change to digest as Lilia will have her ultimate cooldown nerfed, going from 130 scaling to 90 seconds up to 150 scaling to 110 seconds. This is a pretty massive nerf, and although it's obviously targeted toward pro play, it will hit solo queue Lilia quite significantly as well. For the majority of ELOs, Lilia will now become one of the worst jungle picks, as we'll be dropping her from B tier down into C. Lilia may still see some viability in the higher ELOs, but for the average rank, there will be much better options options now. A nerf to Karthus Q damage at the later ranks will be issued going from 45 scaling to 125 down to 45 scaling to 115. Since no damage was taken off at rank 1, very similar to the Hecarim nerf, this change won't be extremely impactful. 10 damage off at max rank is a pretty fair nerf, but won't bump Karthus down from his S tier standing. The final jungle change we have is to Volibear, as his W heal against wounded monsters will be doubled, going from 50 up to 100%. E damage cap will be increased as well, from 150 scaling to 750, up to a flat 750 at all ranks. These buffs will help Volley jungle tremendously, and as a result, our analysts have bumped him from B into A tier. Breaking down our complete jungle tier list now, we see Elise, Kha'Zix, and Hecarim as the three OP picks. Udyr will be dropped out of OP as the nerfs from last patch have lowered his power level a considerable amount, and he's just no longer that true OP pick like he was before. Notice he's only falling to S though, so still a great carry champion to play. Other than that, not much else to note for the jungle roll in 11.6. The best low elo picks to climb out the fastest are Mundo, Ramus, and Fiddlesticks. Top bands at the moment consist of Kha'Zix, Viego, and Hecarim. Moving on to mid lane now, let's start off with the massive changes to Akali. Health will be decreased from 575 down to 500. Health per level will be increased from 95 up to 105. Overall, this is a monstrous hit to her early laning. Passive energy restore has been removed. Q energy cost is changed from 120 scaling to 100 to now 130 scaling to 70. The Q bonus damage to minions at level 9 has been removed. Next, for W, it will have the ability to increase max energy by 80. E damage is being increased from 100 scaling to 380 up to 100 scaling to 450. E AD ratio will be increased from 70 to 85% and the AP ratio from 100 to 120%. E percent of total damage on initial hit will be lowered from 50 down to 30, but increased for the secondary hit from 50 up to 70. Akali R1 ultimate damage type is being changed from physical to magic, and the damage is being nerfed early and buffed later. R1 base damage has been changed from 125 scaling to 325, and now 80 scaling to 360. R1 will now have a 30% AP ratio, so a TLDR from these Akali changes is that her early game will be way more punishable, but she'll scale much better into the late game. It's hard to say whether these alterations will positively impact Akali, as the late game buffs may not even matter at all if her early game is just so punishable. We'll be leaving Akali in the garbage can for the time being, and we'll see how she progresses throughout the patch. 
Silas has been buffed a few times in the past couple of patches, and that trend continues in 11.6. Silas's passive attack speed will be increased from 80 up to 125%. W cooldown will be buffed from 13 scaling to 7 seconds down to 13 scaling to 6 seconds. Another second off Silas W at max rank with the broken ability haste build going around is kind of insane. You can easily reach 50% CDR in the mid game, which would now put the spell on a 3 second cooldown. We can potentially see Silas slipping into S tier over the coming patches, but for for now, he'll remain in A. Another A tier mid will be buffed slightly for 11.6 as LeBlanc sees her W mana cost lowered from 60 scaling to 120 down to 60 scaling to 100. A quality change overall that will be welcomed by LeBlanc players, but not crazy enough to propel her into S tier. So, having a look at our mid tier list now, there really isn't much movement at all. Cassidy, Anivia, Fizz, and Galio will remain the top carry picks of the patch. Zillion is one champ we want to mention, who we featured in our Sleeper OP video a few days ago. The new build of Everfrost into Cosmic Drive is so strong on Zillion, as you stack a ton of haste and put your ult on a sub 30 second cooldown for the mid game. He does a great job at countering many assassin picks as well, so if you're into playing the underrated yet strong picks, nothing really beats Zillion for 11.6. The best low elo champs for mid are Diana, Malzahar, and Annie. You'll want to consider banning out Fizz, Yone, or Kassadin as they're some of the most played and strongest champs of the patch. There's been quite a shift in the ADC meta as of recent, so Riot is letting everything settle out for 11.6. There's no direct changes to ADCs this patch, so the tier list won't see any adjustments. If you guys missed our mid-patch update tier list, we moved Tristana into OP tier alongside Vayne, Jin, Swain, and Kai'Sa. Everything's been trending in favor of Trist as of recent, with many other ADCs being nerfed. Her core build buffed and aggro supports play to the meta. The changes to shield bow should end up being net negative for someone like Samira, but we believe she'll remain a solid A tier pickup. If you're into playing those off meta picks, Cog's pretty sleeper at the moment, especially paired up with Lulu who's being played a ton. Kog'Maw was just buffed last patch and is seeing much better results. Our low elo recommendations include MF, Tristana, and Sivir. If you want to use your ban on an ADC, Kai'Sa, Vayne, or Tristana is where you'll find the most value. It's a pretty quick and easy rundown for support as well. Only one direct change is in store as Pike will have his E cooldown reduced from 15 seconds down to 15 scaling to 11 seconds. A decent mid to late game buff for Pike, but not something that will even come into use for a lot of games and won't affect him early at all. Pike will continue to slot into A tier for 11.6. So guys, for yet another patch, we will see Lulu, Thresh, and Leona on top of the meta with no item changes or considerable buffs or nerfs to any supports. The rest of the list will remain exactly as to where it was in 11.5. The best carry picks for low elo consist of Brand, Maokai, and Swain. A few champs you might want to consider banning out with high play rates and heavy influence include Leona, Thresh, and Morgana. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this one. Now that you have a solid read on the meta, you're all set up to start dominating in 11.6. For our mid-patch update tier list, along with much more meta content, don't forget to head on over to our new channel with the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching everyone, good luck out there in the rift, and we'll see you back soon.